Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Ajay and uh, I'm starting with this new series that is predict the output. In this particular series, we are going to discuss all the questions that are asked in the board question paper for class 12. And uh, this particular series will be very short videos because I'll be having only one question per video. So in one video, I'll be only discussing one question. And most probably, we'll be discussing about finding the outputs and predict the output questions. Okay, so this will be very short videos and it will be an advantage for you like if you get a time in between of 10 minutes or 15 minutes. So you can just go through one question using my videos. Okay, so I'm just starting this series, make use of it. So this is the question in front of you and that's the code, that's the Python code in front of you. And this is the question that has been asked in the, it has been provided through the sample question paper of 2019 and 20. Okay, and the question is question number one, F. In fact, I will show you the question paper. So that's the sample code, sample question paper. And uh, over here, you can see the code. Okay, this was the code that has been asked in that uh, sample question paper. Okay, that's F, question number one, F. Okay, uh, so I have this exact same code in front of you. Now let us try to understand what exactly the output of this particular code will be and I will in detail I will explain you that why we have this output okay first let us try to predict the output let us try to find the output ourselves and then we will run the program and check the output okay now the first thing in this code that you need to understand is that there is a function called as change that's the name of a function since there is a def keyword so this is a function definition the first thing and this is the main program so i'll just give a uh, the comment that this is the main program so the main program starts from here okay we have to understand line by line everything about the code and only then we can uh, we can get a perfect output we can get the perfect answer okay so this is the main program and this is the function definition okay now there is a variable that is r and s the value of the variable r is 150 and s is 100 and over here this particular line so this is the first line this is the second line that will get executed and this is the third line and this is a function a function call isn't it because we are giving a call to this function that is change you can see over here this is the function definition and this is the call to that function and then we are passing the argument that is r comma s we are passing two arguments over here the value of r is 150 and 100 so the value of r okay will received by p so p will be also pointing towards the same value in a way because that's how function uh, that's how python actually refers to a particular value okay so p will have the value that is 150 because we are just using that R argument we are passing and then S that is 100. So over here, now the first thing is this is the, you know, a default parameter, isn't it? A default parameter. Default parameter means that if I don't pass this S, the second argument, then this variable Q will take the default value that is 30. If I don't pass a variable, or the argument over here understand it if this if i just have r over here okay in that case the value of r will be received by p and since the next you know the next argument is missing the value of q will be taken as 30 but in this case i am passing the value that is s so when i'm passing the value of s the value of q will be 100 so i'm just writing over here let us just give a comment that uh, p over here will be 150 isn't it and the value of q will be 100 okay and not 30 because we are passing the argument over here so the value of s is 100 so it will be received by q so p is 150 and q is 100 okay now so basically this is a function call so the controller is going to jump to this particular function because this is a function call i'm giving a call to the function so the controller is going to jump over here 
and the value of p will be 150 q will be 100 and then this particular statement that is the first statement of the function will get executed and that is p plus q the value of p is 150 q is 100 so that makes it 250 and then i'm giving it to p itself so the value of p will change to 250 first it was 150 but now it became 250 okay and then i'm saying the next statement is p minus q now what is the current value of p that is 250 isn't it that's the value that got changed so 250 minus q now what is the value of q 100 so 250 minus 100 that makes the value of q that is 150 isn't it so then i'm printing the value p and then there is a hash character and q and there, there are commas obviously that we need to have commas commas and then by default if there is a comma there will be a space given by python so the first line of code i will write the output over here the output okay okay let me just give that as a comment so output I'm writing it over here so let us write the output that is 250 okay even I that I have to give it into hash okay 250 okay then a space then a hash and then 150 now that's the first uh, thing that I can get from this particular code okay that's the first line of output you can say now then I'm saying if this statement when gets executed it is going to print this one and then I'm saying return P what is the value of P that is 250 isn't it so this particular value is going to return to the function call and it is going to get collected into R okay so now let us understand when I'm returning the value this function the function does not exist because it's now gone the function is over okay and now I'm back to the main program now in the main program we need to understand the, in the main program the value of r was 150 okay now this i'm just saying the value of r was 150 but since i'm returning the value of p and the value of a p was uh, you know it was a 250 isn't it so that value has returned and i've collected that into r so the value of r has now changed to 250 because i'm assigning that value to r whatever the value i'm returning it is getting assigned to r so before it was 150 but now it has become 250 okay and then i'm using a print statement so print r what is the value of r that is 250 so that's the next output that we're getting and there is no end like we are not uh, by default if there are two print statements so it will come to the next line so we will come to the next line it will print 250 and then a hash character and then a hash character and s now what's the value of s in this main program okay that is 100 so this will become 100 isn't it now the next is again there is a function call this is again a second function call isn't it function function call and then you can see I'm passing the value of S. And the value of S is, okay, I'll write the value of S also over here. The value of S is 100. So that value will be received by P because that's again a function call. So it will be received by P. So next time when it received by P, the value of P is currently now 100. Okay, it is now 100. And I'm not passing the second argument. Now you can see the second argument is missing out here. Since the second argument is missing, this particular, you know, the default variable is going to take the default value that is 30. The default parameter, it is going to take the value 30. So over here, I will say the value of Q is now become 30. So 130, that's the current values over here. Now I'm saying P plus Q, what is the value of P? 100 plus 30, it has been received by P itself. So now the value of P will become 130 since 100 plus 30 is 130, isn't it? And then Q is equal to P minus Q. What is the value of P? That is 130 and the value of Q is 30. So Q will be 100. That is 130 minus, uh, minus 30. That's 100. And then I'm printing what exactly it is going to print. Now over here, it is going to print the value that is P. What is the value of current value of P? That is 
130. So let me just type it. That is 130 and then the hash character and the value of Q that is 100. Okay. And this is the output and then it is going to return the value P. But I am collecting that into S but after that I am not doing anything. The, the, the program ends over here. So we are not concerned now what the value has been returned because after this the program ends. So most probably I am predicting this particular output of from my side. Now let us run this code and see the output and I hope I have explained the code pretty nicely to you. As, uh, as far as I am concerned, I think that's the perfect output. Okay, let us just run this and see the output. Now I'm just running this code and here it is. That is 250. 250 hash 150, 250 hash 100, 130 hash 100, isn't it? That's the perfect output and now I hope that you understood this entire code, how it is functioning. It is very important for you to understand the code first. You have to study that code, only then you can reach to a particular output, okay? So I hope you have understood this particular code. This particular series is fantastic. Whenever you have time for one question, I have one video, go through it and you can clear all your doubts. I am going to take all the questions of uh, this uh, current year and the previous years also. And uh, there is a lot of things coming up. Okay, so that's it for today. Bye for now.